Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be doing a review of the new Runcam Racer 2, and right away I'm going to apologize for the table and the lighting. I'm back home from college over Christmas break, and I wasn't able to bring um, a lot of my filming setup with me. I had to leave that there since there was a limited amount of things I could bring, so this is going to have to do for now. So if we open up the camera, right away we get one of their business cards, the extra bag that you have come to expect if you've got cameras before. We do have our breakout cable here. Looks like we do have a bunch of little washers and screws for mounting, as well as we have this little bracket um, if you want to mount it at the bottom of your frame. Pretty uncommon, but it's nice to include it. Although this is probably one of the nicest accessories to include. Oh, I've never actually seen this come with a camera. This little clear guy, this is actually an adapter to fit it to a mini size camera. So now you can, excuse me, to fit it to a full size camera. So now you can use this in an older frame that, say, it doesn't um, accept micro style cameras. You can use the micro camera in a full size frame, which is very nice. If we take a look at the camera itself, it looks identical to the original racer. See, here's the racer 2, and then here is the original racer. It is, looks like a little bit longer, but it just looks like they used a slightly different lens. And then if you compare it to the Micro Swift 3, it's pretty much the same exact size, except now they've gone with this fully enclosed design, so it should be more durable. So the Racer series is a 16x9 slash 4x3 switchable camera, and it is a CMOS camera, pretty similar in specs to the Predator. That's just calling for this, and the difference between the Racer and the Racer 2 is the Racer originally came with just TX and RX, so you controlled this with a UART on your flight controller. However, now if you check, um, this says M slash RX and G slash TX. So this guy actually can use the little joystick dongle to change the settings or can use the UART to change the settings. And it is a little interesting to see that they don't include a dongle. Um, I definitely do want you using the UART instead, but I actually prefer using the little dongle things, which is just something like this, like one of these little control boards that you plug in because I pretty much only ever change my settings once when I'm building the quad. I don't really have much need for changing my settings on the go with camera control. However, it is really nice that they give you the option, and it's as easy as shorting these two together. The um, last two pins here, you short them together, and then you power it on. And originally, it comes from the box using the little dongle control, and if you short them and power it on, it'll switch to using the light controller camera control, so it's really easy to change it back and forth. So it's just a real quick intro on the Racer 2. It pretty much has the standard 1.8mm lens that a lot of these micro cameras have. It should weigh around 6 grams. And I'm actually going to be putting it into this um, Mode 2 Ghost version 2 with some Hobbywing motors here um, that I've been rebuilding. I pretty much, it was an old quad, it needed a lot of things fixed. So I'm just going to, while I'm rebuilding this, I'm going to plop the Racer 2 in there. Once I have it all rebuilt, we'll go through the settings and then we'll test it out and see what kind of footage it produces. Okay, I have the Runcam Racer plugged up to use um, the little dongle control. And once again, if you wanted to use the uh, UART control through your flight controller, you just short these little two wires um, when you plug it in, and then you'll be able to hook it up to a UART. So first off, clicking the middle sections, you can see we have pick adjust. We have all of our main settings right here. You go back, you have your white balance adjustments, and that's your main menu, and you can save or not save. And if you hold right on the stick, you can see we're outdoor, we're changing our modes. Indoor, cloudy, twilight, personal, that's the main settings. And then you have light tracks, and you should be able to go back to the left. Nope, you can only go through the right through this main menu. Okay, and then if you press and hold up, you access this menu here, which lets you turn um, the pilot name, voltage, and the alarm on or off. I'm going to turn... All of these off since I use the Betaflight OSD. Sharp view, I'm not exactly sure what that is. And then you can change NTSC and PAL here. And exit. And you can see in the top left it says joystick control. So yeah, let's take it outside and see what it looks like. All right, here we are. We have the Runcam Racer 2 outside on the fully stocked settings. And that green that you see at the bottom of the screen is just a camera mount. I'm sorry that's in the way. i take this up. It is... Uh, Pretty sunny out right now, you can see hopefully that looks very, very nice. The image overall has a lot of saturation and coloring. 
pretty consistent with like the uh, Sparrow 2 Micro. Obviously, looking at the sun, sea moss, just like a predator, shows the sun very, very well. Doesn't really blow out the image too much, shows a little dot. And if we look up and down, transitions very quickly. I can't really do too much slower flying. I have like 50 degree camera tilt on here. Tune is definitely not ideal. Just put on new motors, so it's gonna need retuned. Yeah, but the camera into the light, like right there, um, the trees I'm looking at are a little blown out. Um, but honestly, it's a really hard condition for the camera and I wouldn't expect anything more from a different camera because it is really bright facing that direction. Um, there is a little bit of like shimmering, a little shimmering, just it's really sharp, um, sort of like the Eagle. Um, but I definitely do like this a lot more than the Micro Eagle. Um, the 1.8 millimeter lens field of view is very nice. Not much fish eye. I fly it on 16.9, but I'm showing you 4x3. That's what it's actually outputting. But yeah, like look at the colors of the sky and the lake. Everything is pretty well represented. Definitely, definitely giving the Predator uh, V3, which is my current favorite camera, a uh, run for the money here. Definitely, yeah. Really liking this camera so far. So yeah, before uh, the V3, Predator V3 is definitely my favorite. And it was pretty much, you know, that was what I recommend, but now this is definitely a very, very close substitute. It's just, um, it has a little bit more saturation, it looks like. And when I'm going over the trees, like looking down, it looks a little whiter. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, but yeah, now I'd say their Predator and this are pretty darn equal. Very nice images, both slightly different. So now if you like run cam, definitely get this. And you like Foxy or get the Predator. But. Yeah, this is the most impressive I've done with a run cam so far. Very nice light. You can see the trees right there with the sun behind them. Very nice. I'm sure this is going to be a lot of people's uh, racing camera. And obviously that uh, voltage and name at the bottom and timer can go away. I just didn't do that yet. And then below that, that's my Betaflay OSD. Um, but it will display voltage if you hook up the VBAT wire. Yeah, just having a lot of fun uh, flying around with this. It's quad flying. Well, besides the tuning, it's still got a lot of power. Um, but the battery's getting a little low. Yeah, very, very impressive the camera. Okay, so here we are back inside to finish up my thoughts on the Ron Cam Racer. And if you could not tell from the flight footage, I was definitely very, very impressed in the camera. The overall saturation, the colors, the sharpness, the image, the contrast, pretty much everything about the image was very, very nice. It was definitely one of the nicest, if not the nicest images that I've ever seen. And I can't really decide if I like this or the Fox or Predator more. Both are very, very fantastic, and this definitely this little run cam racer two is definitely going to be a top racing camera of the coming year. <laughs> so yeah, there's really not much more for me to say about it. I really definitely enjoyed it. So if you have the chance to pick one up, I don't think you'll be disappointed. There'll be links down below in the description if you're interested. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.